Are there things in your life that you wish you could go back and change? Oh, what I would give to go back and change the story of Marilyn Decker. I was a deputy sheriff in Broward County back in the 80s. I worked the midnight shift in District 2. And one night I was dispatched to the Melrose Park neighborhood on reports of a woman screaming. When I got there and stepped out of the car, <laughs> she wasn't just screaming, she was shrieking like she was being skinned alive. It was coming from a distance, so I ran between the houses, hopped a fence, into the trees, followed the screams, crossed two more streets before I found a house with the window smashed out and a man trying to rape a young woman on the kitchen floor. But she was fighting hard. I grabbed my radio to call for backup but realized I had no idea where I was. I didn't know what street we were on. So I climbed through the window and grabbed the rapist and the fight was on. We were punching and gouging and rolling in the broken glass. I thought, sure, <laughs> one of us was going to die. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw that the woman was on the phone. And soon the front door exploded open and Deputy Jack Greeny landed on the rapist hard. And the fight was over. Bad guy was in handcuffs. I was bruised and bleeding from a dozen cuts. The victim's name was Marilyn Decker. And her attacker was the leader of a gang known as the Melrose Park Mob. He was tried for burglary and attempted rape, and Marilyn and I were the only two witnesses. So there we sat in the hallway of the courthouse with the entire Melrose Park mob across from us. I thought, sure, Marilyn would be too intimidated to testify, but she did it, and the bad guy went to jail for a long time. The trial lasted a couple of weeks, and Marilyn and I became friends. One problem, though, was that Marilyn liked to smoke her dope and I couldn't stand that so after the trial I lost contact with her. <coughs> About a year later I was working the midnight shift and was dispatched to a lady locked out of her house. I recognized Marilyn's house as soon as I pulled up. In a pouring rainstorm I saw what looked like a shriveled up old woman walk to my car. I was horrified to find that this pale soaking wet skeleton of a woman was Marilyn. She sat shivering in my car and told me that she was now smoking crack cocaine that at first was given to her for free by a local dealer, but now she was horribly addicted and was prostituting herself to get the crack. We both cried over what had happened to her. She told me that she desperately needed to get into rehab. And Narcotics Anonymous had a meeting next Monday. She had no way to get there, so I promised her that I would take her to that meeting. Now after the rape attempt, Marilyn's dad had welded steel bars over the windows and installed heavy duty security doors and try as I might, I could not get her into her house that night. So she asked me to drop her off a few blocks from the crack dealer's house. She would stay with him that night and she would see me on Monday. Well. On Monday, my stunningly beautiful girlfriend surprised me with a special romantic dinner and I forgot about taking Marilyn to Narcotics Anonymous. So I made up my mind I'd take her next week. When I went to work a few nights later, the sergeant took me aside and told me that they had found Marilyn in a canal with her throat cut and a plastic bag over her head. And before she died, they tortured her by shoving a knife up her private parts. And I fear that she was murdered because they saw her in my sheriff's car that night. I try not to think about Marilyn, but I do know that I would give anything if I could go back and keep my promise to pick her up, take her to that Narcotics Anonymous meeting. We all fall short in many ways, things we do things we fail to do. But as 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Whatever your failures are, and no matter how horrible the consequences, know that God stands ready to forgive. In Mark 1, 15, Jesus said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. This is Wild Bill for America. Thank you for watching. And America, bless God again.